Hello, this is Dr. Donald Wiper from Greenville Health System, and we're going to talk about uterine cancers and discuss them in broad terms and do an overview of the different types of malignancies that can arise within them and uh, the most common, which is endometrial cancer. So here's a uterus and any number of malignancies can arise, typically about four. What we're not going to be talking about is this area down here, which is the cervix and is handled separately. And even though logically it's part of the uterus, just like your hand is part of your arm, because of its behavior, uh, different oncobiology, uh, and uh, different management, uh, we think about it completely separately and have separate nomenclature for it. What we are going to talk about is cancers that arise in here, which is the endometrium, and then cancers that can arise in the muscle wall here. So let's start with these, and we're only going to touch on this briefly uh, because we're going to spend most of our time on endometrial cancer. Cancers that arise in the muscular wall are leiomyosarcomas. They are the malignant version of leiomyomas, commonly known as fibroids. And that is about the only malignancy that arises within the muscular wall. If we focus on the endometrium, and if we blow this endometrium up and think about it from a histologic standpoint, there are stroma and there are glands. Glands and intervening stroma. Any of these ele elements can become malignant. If the glands alone are malignant, we call that endometrial cancer. If the stroma itself is malignant, but the glands are benign, we call that an endometrial stromal sarcoma. These come in two flavors, low grade and high grade. If both the stroma and the glands are malignant. So the glands are malignant and the stroma is malignant together. We have essentially two different uh, cell lines that are malignant, also uh, commonly called a biphasic tumor. And in this case, we call this a carcinosarcoma or for years we've called it a malignant mixed malarian tumor or triple MT. The mixed referencing the fact that there are two different cell lines involved. Those four, carcinosarcoma, endometrial cancer, and then low and high grade endometrial stromal sarcoma are the four malignancies that can arise uh, within the uterus. Next what I want to do is talk about endometrial cancer. And we're going to spend the rest of the time talking about that. This is uh, 90 to 95 percent of the total when we're talking about uterine cancer. As you can see, all endometrial cancers are uterine cancer, but not all uterine cancers are endometrial cancer. But this is what people are commonly referring to when they say uterine cancer, but that's actually not accurate. Endometrial cancer is one of the four that we talked about. It just happens to be by far the most common or prevalent. Endometrial cancer, um, currently in the United States, there's about 50,000 cases per year. Uh, it's the number one uh, GYN cancer, um, and it is uh, very much on the rise. The reason epidemiologically we think it's on the rise is probably due to two main factors, one being more and more uh, cases of PCOS, or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is uh, characterized by
a number of things, including in them oligoovulation. Oligoovulation leads to a relative uh, excess of estrogen compared to uh, the progesterone that should be produced by the corpus luteum. That production doesn't happen if one doesn't ovulate, and therefore there's an imbalance of estrogen. So PCOS fundamentally leads to excess estrogen. This excess estrogen ends up being a stimulation for growth in the endometrium. The second reason, uh, and similar, is uh, the rates of obesity. Uh, it's well established that fat cells can take androstenedione dione from your adrenal gland and convert it into estrone, which is the weakest but most prevalent of the uh, circulating estrogens. This production factory is in adipose cells or fat cells in the body, and to the extent that obesity rates rise, the production of this increases, again leading to a relative uh, increase in estrogen. In this case, it's a relative increase because really the problem is too little progesterone, but in this case there's an actual uh, increase in uh, circulating estrogen levels. Both of those lead to hyperstimulation of the endometrium. So let's talk about um, uh, type 1 and type 2 endometrial cancer, because I think that will help lay the uh, foundation for understanding this. In GYN oncology circles, endometrial cancer gets talked about as either being type 1 or type 2. Type 1 has everything to do with excess estrogen, and it can be absolute or relative, as I just discussed. Type 2 has nothing to do with estrogen and has everything to do with activated oncogenes or suppressed tumor suppressor genes. A classic here would be P53. So this pathway over here in type 2 has nothing to do with hormones. Type 1 has everything to do with hormones. The increasing rates of endometrial cancer predominantly fall into this category because uh, both PCOS and obesity relate to um, hormone production or lack thereof and increase one's risk for type 1 endometrial cancer. Therefore, type 1 endometrial cancer is uh, virtually all of the cases that are seen in premenopausal women. There's a myth out there that endometrial cancer is a uh, disease of postmenopausal women. It's not true. It's always been at least 25% of the total, and that number is going up as these problems uh, increase, and this increase is largely in the premenopausal uh, group. We may see one day soon that just as many endometrial cancers are arising premenopausally as they are postmenopausally. Type 1 cancers uh, typically affect either the premenopausal people or obese postmenopausal women. It is very rare to have a type 2 cancer arise in a premenopausal woman. The hallmark of this category over here for type 1 is the development of some degree of hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is a word meaning too much growth. This hyperplasia can eventually um, uh, lead to development of a malignancy. The good news is that most of these cancers are typically low grade and typically non or minimally invasive. Not always so, but usually so. So the outcomes of type 1 malignancies uh, generally are quite good. The understanding of type 2 cancers uh, uh, hinges on understanding that this has nothing to do with hormones, but has to do with genomic instability and has to do with 
uh, mutations in uh, genes that control uh, growth. These cancers, uh, if we look at them histologically, are typically uh, serous carcinomas of the endometrium or clear cell carcinomas of the endometrium or grade 3 endometrioid. The histology over on this side is always endometrioid and typically grade 1 or grade 2 but not grade 3. That summarizes type 1 and type 2.